Canada adopts an electric vehicle mandate. Is that genius or really stupid? Canada's Environment Minister Stephen Guilbeault announced just before the holidays that they will be adopting an electric vehicle mandate. 20% of new vehicle sales in Canada will have to be zero emission by 2026. In 2030, that number goes up to 60% of new vehicle sales will have to be electric. And in 2035, 100% of new vehicle sales will have to be electric. Um, and by the way, that does mean uh, light duty vehicles. That's not heavy duty vehicles, that's light duty vehicles. So that's car, personally, personal cars, trucks, um, that kind of thing. Um, also fleet vehicles and so on, but <clears throat> excluded is certain types of heavy vehicles, uh, tractor trailers, pork trucks, that kind of thing. Um, and note it says zero emissions. That doesn't necessarily mean electric. That could mean hydrogen uh, fuel cell vehicles. That could be uh, as yet unknown types of vehicles. And it can also be uh, plug-in hybrids as long as they go um, 30 to 80 percent, uh, sorry, 30 to 80 kilometers on a on their on their battery charge. Um, that's a wide range, 30 to 80 kilometers. So the minimum for it to be considered zero emissions is 30 kilometers, um, and obviously has a gas engine. That's kind of a nod to uh, some of the realities in remote Canada where it can be ridiculously long distances to get from A to B um, with virtually nothing in between. So there is a, a, a use case for this sort of thing. And, and hybrids would, would definitely, plug-in hybrids would definitely fill that bill. Um, I don't think 80 kilometers range is a particularly high bar. I don't know why they'd bother with a 30 kilometer range. Uh, the Chevrolet Volt uh, plug-in hybrid that dates back to, I think it's 2010 or 2012, uh, did 88 kilometers back then. Um, and by all accounts, it was a very good vehicle. So I'm fairly sure that to achieve 80 kilometers range or 80, uh, 80 kilometers range, uh, that shouldn't be too hard. Uh, as for um, why it's a 30 to 80 kilometer range scenario is, the incentives or credits that will be available to EV buyers to offset the higher cost of EVs um, will be prorated on plug-in hybrid vehicles. So if your if your vehicle had 80 kilometers range, you would get the full credit, whatever that is. I don't think I haven't been able to see anyways that they specified what that credit will be. Um, and if you're at 30 percent, then it's a prorated version of that amount. So let's let's just say it's uh, 40 kilometers range. Instead of 80 kilometers range, maybe you get, I don't know, two thirds of the of the uh, of the incentive, whatever that is. It's that's how that will work. Um, There will also be increased credits for electric vehicle charging installations. There already are some now, uh, but it is currently on a system of, of uh, basically a, a pot of money is allotted for supporting EV charger installations. And uh, that would be basically a subsidy to the installations. Um, it sounds like, and it hasn't been spelled out that I've seen anyways, perhaps in the new year with the new budget, we'll see all the details. Um, it sounds like they're they're planning to move to a, a US IRA style uh, credit based system uh, so that there is, uh, it's a broad amount of money uh, essentially for installing EV chargers. Um, essentially, you would get a tax credit for X amount of dollars for installing chargers. Um, I, I assume that will be uh, able to be carried over several years to allow for profitability and to help defray the cost of initial installation. Uh, EV charging is a big hole uh, in uh, Canada's uh, landscape. 
Uh, it is uh, pretty good in Quebec, but it still needs work there. Um, and it's okay in places like BC uh, and not so good in Ontario, uh, but it needs to improve uh, broad scale right across the country uh, for these uh, mandate targets to take a, to be effective. Um, why would Canada adopt a mandate? Uh, there's a couple of uh, a couple of reasons. One, two of our of our biggest provinces, Quebec and BC, um, already have a mandate, um, so it's kind of aligning with them. Uh, it's also aligning with about 17 other uh, G7 or G20 countries uh, worldwide. Um, you know, countries like Japan. UK, the Netherlands, Canada, uh, they all have 2030 or 2035 deadlines. And 2035, it seems to be where the majority of countries are, are zeroing in on as their 100% mandate. Now, you ask yourself, you know, why would we do that? Well, let's first let's dial back into a bit of Canadian history. Back in 2022, EV sales were 8.9% uh, of, of uh, new car sales. In 2023, the year that just ended, it, after nine months, it was 10.3% oh, oh, of new car sales. And the last quarter was about, I think it was about 12.4%, if memory serves. It's somewhat higher, and it's a rising uh, percentage. So that should put us in around the 11% for the for the year ended, uh, maybe a little bit higher. Um, that's not bad, but that is not great. Um, you note that I said that uh, the first three months, the first nine months was eight point, was it eight point nine percent, and the last quarter was was quite a bit higher at about 12.4%. I could see that in the market uh, myself. That last quarter, for whatever reason, uh, a lot more vehicles started showing up on, on lots. I got the call in the last quarter of 2023 to pick up my new EV. Um, and a lot of people did. And uh, anecdotally, comments on the channel, people are saying that a lot of their orders are starting to finally come in. So one of the things that's holding back adoption in Canada is availability. There is not a lot of availability of supply in this country. You only have to watch YouTube channels out of the States uh, or Europe for a few days to realize that they have a whole lot more product than we do. And specifically in the States, um, less so in Europe, but in the States, they have a lot more product in states that have EV mandates. So states like California. California gets basically every kind of EV on the market, shows up in the dealerships in California, and they have multiple copies on the lot for you to choose from. States that don't have mandates don't get as much support. They don't get as much product. Now, why is that? Well, on the... Um, cup is half full side. Automakers can only produce so many vehicles right now. They're, they're going flat out. They're producing as many as they can. So they're, they're gravitating those vehicles to the places they have to put them by law or they'll get fined or whatever the, the case may be in that jurisdiction. Um, the negative side of that is, um, the negative side of that equation is the auto manufacturers are trying to wring every last dollar out of their ICE production. And if there is no mandate, they will conveniently not have too many electric cars going to those markets because they want to sell more ICE vehicles. Could be one, could be the other, probably is a combination of both. Uh, GM is a great example of, of probably the former. Um, they are having a terrible time getting new EVs out the door because they're having real problems with their Altium uh, battery production. 
uh, and they decided to cancel the Bolt before having the new production line open for the Bolt. So GM is making their own bed. Why would Canada and 17 other countries, and apparently more coming on board soon, make a decision to have EV mandates? It sounds politically dangerous. Uh, the immediate comments you hear from both the auto industry and the and the the naysayers is, oh, they're so expensive, and the and the auto industry already is having a hard time producing electric vehicles. Why would you do this? They'll never be able to make it in time. All this kind of thing. Well, a couple of reasons. One, there's the environmental reason. We have mandates and and agreements internationally to reduce our carbon emissions. Uh, as a nation uh, and as a planet, and we have to meet those targets. And one of those ways is to is to convert to electric vehicles. There's a lot of other things going on, but EVs seem to capture a lot of the a lot of the press because they're they're right in your face. Uh, as far as the electricity grid goes, that's as important as as the EVs. Uh, actually, it, it produces more carbon emissions than electric vehicles, but or than uh, passenger vehicles, uh, but only by by a, the narrowest margin, and that is changing very rapidly. Uh, but to you, the consumer, you'll plug your electrical appliance into the outlet, and it will still do whatever it does, and you won't really know unless you choose to find out what your electrical grid runs on. Um, but for electric vehicles, um, that's more in your face. So it's more obvious and generates more um, uh, positive stories and negative stories. But why would a country like Canada or 17 other countries do a mandate? Well, they have heard from industry for not just electric vehicles, but for other things. If you want to change uh, behavior, you want to change what is produced, you need to have legislation in place to mandate that change. Why? Why would they want it? Because you can hear uh, industry talking heads saying, this is a bad thing. Why the government shouldn't be doing this. They should stay out of our business. Let the consumers decide. Um, yeah, there's the that's one side. But then there's the boardroom side that says to government, you know what? Um, we'd love to make electric vehicles, but unless we're sure that we can sell them, then that's billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of investment that could potentially go down the drain and do absolutely nothing. Um, government says, well, this is a once in a, in a, in a generation kind of uh, sea change that we need to see happen. So we're going to mandate that this happens. What that does for industry, uh, for the automotive industry, is it says, okay, we have a target. We have to produce X number of vehicles for that country by that time and many other countries. Um, a large portion of the world's population now uh, is, it has a mandate to be in electric vehicles. Um, that says to the automotive industry, ah, that's critical mass. We can do that. And with critical mass, we can get uh, the, the scale, the volume to bring down the vehicles. We can demand in industry that our supply chains produce what we need to make those vehicles because everybody in the supply chain knows their investment is not going to go to waste. You hear some opposition politicians that will say things like, well, I'm just going to cancel that thing when, when it comes around to me being in charge. Well, you might want to think a little bit about that because in Canada and many other parts of the world now, um, these mandates are not going anywhere. Now, in Canada, if if the Conservatives get in, uh, Pierre Polyev has said, you know, he would cancel that uh, policy. But what is he saying to business if he does that? But businesses like Volkswagen, like Stellantis, like GM, um, that have made immense um, investments in Canada that are aimed at the electric vehicle industry. That's not to mention uh, Canadian startups like Lion Electric or our mining sector or our uh, metals processing sectors. 
that are all investing billions of dollars to this end. And to be honest, the rest of the world isn't changing their mind just because Canada does or does not. We need to guarantee those investments into those industries to ensure our future, to ensure those companies' success, and to ensure that those that want electric vehicles will have them when they need them. Because they will want them. Most people do want them. That's been proven. A lot of people want an electric vehicle, but they want one that they can afford, and they want one in the type that they like that they can afford. Mass production will achieve both those goals. Um, you can also see in, in markets like California and Europe where the mandates exist more, more fully, there is more choice, there is more competition, and the prices of EVs are much lower, right? So an EV mandate will level the playing field between ICE and uh, electric vehicles in the short term. We are heading along the right trajectory already. Um, I think a mandate, uh, the 2026 mandate, 20%, that's very achievable. Even on our current growth rate, um, we would probably get close to hitting that uh, anyways. But if the manufacturers are putting the product on the lots, that will get us there for sure. Because a lot of the problem with electric vehicles is people are going to the lot, they need a new car, and they want to look at the electric cars on the lot, but they're not there. There's only gas cars on the lot. Or maybe they might have one electric car. Oh, but if you want that, that's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight months before you can get that EV. So why don't you just take this gas car, right? That isn't a person who wanted an EV but had to take a gas car because theirs died, right? or their lease expired, or whatever. That's not okay. People need to be able to make that choice. And for those that say, well, I want to be able to choose that gas car forever. Well, I don't think a lot of people will. Um, as the industry, and it's not just Canada. You have to remember, there is no Canadian uh, automaker that's just surviving making, elect making vehicles for Canadians. No, they're all international players. We make a piece of that market. Um, if other countries are doing mandates and are moving to electric vehicles and we say, hey, hey, no, we don't want to do that, we're going to do it anyways. You know why? Because the tipping point is coming where it is more cost effective for vehicle manufacturers to make electric vehicles than gas vehicles. And that's when the pendulum is going to switch. There, people are be buying less gas vehicles and they'll be buying more electric vehicles. That means the supply chains for gas vehicles will get more expensive and the supply chains for electric vehicles will get less expensive. Make sense? That's supply uh, and demand. That's supply side economics. That's just the way that works. And right now it's a budding industry, but it is growing. I've heard some comments about how a lot of the electric vehicles and the parts come out of China. And that is true because China produces a lot of electric vehicles. They're 20 or 22 percent of their new vehicle sales are electric in China. That's a lot. That's more than basically the rest of the planet combined. That is huge. So China is doing their part and they're growing. But if you haven't noticed, Canada and the States and Mexico uh, and Europe, they're all doing their parts too. We're building battery plants. We're building mining, metal uh, processing factories all in North America. We're building, we're retooling car plants that used to produce ICE vehicles to produce electric vehicles. We're building new plants to produce electric vehicles. The change is happening and more and more vehicles will be electric. But it will take time and it does need certainty. That certainty also will matter for um, the EV charging industry. Right now, it's almost, I have no idea why people build EV chargers because I'm fairly sure they don't make any money. Um, a, they cost a ridiculous amount of money to install right now because they're not produced. Each one is virtually bespoke. Um, yeah, they, they make some volume, but it's not like an assembly line, not even close. Um, it's very expensive to buy electric vehicle chargers. Think 
the faster chargers are probably around a quarter million. And some of the slower ones you might get for, you know, the like a 50 kilowatt, you can get probably for about 30,000, 30 to 50,000. And then you have to hook it up, which basically doubles the cost. So think at least 100,000 to 150,000 to install one charger. And you got to make that back at what, $28 an hour. That's, that's a, I don't know how you do that. Uh, but God love them to try. Uh, the mandate will allow bigger players, uh, allow more players, existing players, um, uh, like gas station chains, like convenience store chains, like restaurant chains, like mall chains, uh, like condos and apartment buildings to start making the investment in EV charging, getting that scale of mass production up. And with that investment in, in they'll make that investment in, in EV charging because they know 20% of new electric vehicle sales in 2026 or new vehicle sales in 2026 will be electric. And that in 2030, that goes up to 60%. And in 2035, that's 100%. That says, that is a business plan that goes from here to here to here to here. And that's something they can sell to a bank. That's where they can get financing. That's something they can sell to investors and shareholders that they can do these things. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Please comment and subscribe. If you thought this, this content had value, please uh, put a like, subscribe, and for sure comment. I want to hear what you have to say. The comments have been growing quite a bit lately, and I try to answer all of them. Um, and, and I like to hear from you. It gives me ideas for the next episode. It lets me know what you want to know about. And it gives me an idea uh, if I'm doing the things you want to you wanna watch. I've had a couple of, of episodes. Here's a bit of a channel update where we're at. Because I think we've exhausted the entertainment value of, of, uh, of why mandates exist uh, and the knowledge value. A um, couple of channel updates is I've seen some of my, of the episodes that I thought would be really great. They didn't do as well. Like some of the interview episodes, which I thought would, would do really well, um, have it, and I'm not sure why. Um, you're, but you're telling me something, so uh, we'll, we'll discuss that, or I'll look at that more. But if you have comments, please, please uh, put them out there. And if you saw one of the interviews and you liked it, um, please share it to other people because I think that should grow. And the interviewees uh, invested some time in being on the show, and I'd like them to get at least the reward of having been heard. Um, a couple other things, like I wasn't expecting my, my, my seasonal message to be particularly, uh, of interest because people have other things to do on the holidays and it's a bit of a rambling and a bit preachy, uh, episode, but it was the holidays and I wanted to do something that was a bit, uh, a bit more, I don't know, I don't want to say meaningful because it's all, I think it's all meaningful. It's all important to me and hopefully to you because you do subscribe and you do watch, but it's, it was a bit more I know, moralistic and not everybody wants to be moral that, but the holidays are a time to reflect and, uh, and I think make some new commitments and some new changes. It's 2024. I hope you enjoyed, uh, the Northern electric vehicle experience in 2023. And I hope we grow and grow and grow in 2024. Please send me those comments and let me know what you want to hear and see. That's it for now. See you again in the week. Bye for now.